Exodus chapter 23 from verse 25. Exodus 23 from verse 25. He said, And ye shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread and thy waters. And I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. There shall nothing cast their young, nor be barren in thy land. The number of thy days I will fulfill. This evening we are talking about the covenant of fruitfulness. We have looked at the importance of covenant and emphasized that every relationship of God with man is based on covenant. And so, God has made a covenant with our father Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, that they will be fruitful. As a matter of fact, I've discovered that from the very beginning when God created the man, the first pronouncement of God is the pronouncement of fruitfulness. When he wanted to create, he said, I want to create them for dominion. In verse 26. But when man was actually created, in verse 28, God came and the Bible says, and God blessed them. And God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it. Now, in the design when he wanted to create man, he said, come, let us create a man in our image and after our likeness and let them have dominion. But when he created them, now he decided to reorder it. Now, because it is fruitfulness that will lead to dominion. Until someone begins to be fruitful, he can end up in dominion. Fruitfulness is to just continue to multiply and continue to spread until, over, until you, be, you overshadow every other. And if there is a place that God is taking us to, it is a place where we will overshadow every other person, every other creature in life in the mighty name of Jesus. The first blessing of God is a blessing of fruitfulness. And so, when God gave this divine instruction, it is an empowerment unto man in order to get to the place where he will rule. Where he will rule the world. If a man is just one, one person, no matter how strong one man is, there is a limit to what he can do. There is a limit to how much he can represent himself at different angles. But when it now begins to spread and cover space, definitely he begins to represent himself at different constituency. If there is a place that God is taking you to, it is that you will rule your world. And for you to rule your world, you need to understand the mandate of dominion. But for you to get to the place of dominion, the blessing of fruitfulness must come to play. The mandate over man was to dominate. But the blessing that will bring it, that will make it happen, is the blessing of fruitfulness. We are created in the image and in the likeness of God. In such that uh, God is a creator and God will want us to also be a creator. We are like God in ability and authority at the level he has placed us. And so we are expected to manifest the, you know, the authority and the glory of God where the Lord has placed us. Be fruitful is a command. 
if we ever going to fulfill God's divine mandate, this instruction, the first instruction, first command, be fruitful, must be put into manifestation. It is the first imperative unto man. And I think I've said this before, that word, be, is an active word, an action word. It is a word that is bringing out the potential and the ability that is inside of each one of us. Each one of us created by the most high. We are created with certain ability. And the ability of God that is inside of us until we obey this instruction, we don't manifest it. When you read in Genesis chapter 1 in verse 12, Genesis chapter 1 verse 12, the Bible tells us that God brought forth grass and herbs yielding seed after his kind and tree yielded fruit whose seed is in itself. Now everything that God created has a seed of reproduction inside of it. Everything that God made has a created seed inside of it. So and that is where the seed principle also is. Now God is a God of principle. He created everything and he put a seed inside of them to reproduce themselves. And that is the reason why you discover that God never has to do the work of production twice. Now what we make each of the things that he has created to reproduce, you know, was inside each one of them. Amen. And that was the same thing applicable to man. When he created the man, he also put seed inside man for reproduction. So inside every creature there is a seed. And that seed is meant to begin to bring forth reproduction, replenishment. In increase, multiplication, you know, advancement in every aspect. So where we want to obey the instruction of this, of the Lord concerning fruitfulness. The word be fruitful mean blossom. There is a seed inside of you that must blossom. The word fruitful mean Flourish. There is a seed inside of you that must flourish. That must turn one to two, two to four, four to eight, and then you keep on increasing. The word fruitful mean be productive. The word fruitful mean bring forth. So when God says be fruitful, he say, where I have planted you, blossom there. Where I have positioned you, flourish there. Where I have positioned you, reproduce yourself there. Where I have positioned you, bring forth in the place. And as you bring forth, you fulfill the divine mandate. I said that word, be is a, a verb which is an action word. I mean, it means three things. It is first a demand on potential. You have the potential to be so become. You have what it takes inside of you to produce. So go ahead, produce. You have everything that is needed in order to, to get what you wanted. So bring it forth. It's a demand on potential. Two, it is a call into existence. 
Seed is always inside. Seed is always not visible. So it is to bring forth what is inside. It is to bring into manifestation that which is not seen. So, so much is inside, invested, but yet covered and not visible to the eye. But by the time it begins to be fruitful, it brings into existence, it brings into manifestation. And then, totally, be fruitful is a command. Obey this world. I find out that man was not the first to get this command from the Lord. Now God commanded, you know, all the, 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 the thing he created. All the animal, the fish, and what have you created. Genesis chapter 1 verse 22. And God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let fowl multiply in the earth. So God created fish and said, take over the fish, multiply yourself inside the fish. And the fish began to obey. They began to multiply themselves inside the waters. He said, let the fowl begin to multiply themselves upon the earth. And they obeyed. They began to multiply themselves. So the world be fruitful was first given to the animal before it was given to man. But because God will want us to rule over them, that's why he did not ask them to have dominion. When he was saying to man, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, and have dominion. So for us to get to the place of dominion, we must be more fruitful than the animals. That is the expectation of God. That is the design of God. So that we can, we, we will dominate them. And I discovered that when the first wall was erased by water, God revisited to reenact that blessing. So that nobody would say, well, when God pro pronounced that blessing before, the water has covered the earth. And so the blessing has been swept away. So, all after the flood, God came back in Genesis chapter 8 in verse 17 to repronounce that blessing. In Genesis chapter 9 in verse 1, God came again to reconfirm it. He has canceled it once. He decided to come twice to pour this blessing so that uh, we will have no excuse of not producing according to the mind of God. As a matter of fact, in chapter 9 of Genesis, God returned back in verse 7 to say again, God blessed, the, God blessed Noah and his, and his son and said unto them, Be fruitful, multiply the earth, replenish it. Making the third time after the flood that God was saying it. I discovered that when God called Abraham and said, I want to make a new nation out of you. I believe that God has seen that man were not doing what God has promised. So he said, Abraham, come. I want to make a, a, a peculiar person out of you. And in Genesis chapter 17 verse 6, God pronounced that blessing again. You will be fruitful and multiply. He said, bring forth abundantly. That was a blessing of Abraham. So when you say Abraham, blessings are mine. One of the blessings of Abraham 
is that one in Genesis 17 verse 6 to be exceedingly fruitful and uh, to become a great nation so that kings were able to come out of you. God pronounced blessing upon blessing upon, 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 upon us. And this blessing is a blessing of fruitfulness. That the seed that is inside of us, that the seed that he has given unto us will reproduce. A seed has what it takes to become a tree that will produce many fruits, that will have many seeds. So that there can be many other trees that will produce many other fruits and many other trees so that uh, the forest can be, you know, replenished. That there will be more and more and more production by the system that God has put in place. God keep commanding that we continue to be fruitful and replenish the earth. To my amazement, I discovered that when God wanted to compensate Ishmael after being asked to be separated from Abraham in Genesis chapter 17 as we read from verse 20 to 21 Genesis 17, verse 20 to 21, said, And as for Ishmael, I have had thee. You know, he was asking that Ishmael will live before the Lord. He said, Behold, I have blessed him, and I will make him fruitful, and multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall he begot, and I will make him a great nation. Then in verse 21 he said, But my covenant will I establish with Isaac, which Sarah shall bear unto thee, and this at this set time in the next year. Now one question I now ask myself is, why did Ishmael 12 princes became 12 nations and Isaac 12 tribe ended up one nation. Simple. An obedience to the wall fruitful, be fruitful. Ishmael said to himself, well, if that is what God has blessed me with, I will continue to reproduce. And even up to today, that is the mandate Ishmael has given to his children. You want to rule everywhere in the world? He said, continue to reproduce yourself. Don't give number. Don't think figure. Just continue to. Just continue. Just continue. And they said they are confident that one day the whole world will be under them. Particularly now that you talk about democracy, they say it's a game of number. You have one, one child, I have 20. Uh, it's a game of number. We see who rule who. Now, God is making it, has made a design. And it depends on the way we have handled it. I want you to know that Jesus' attitude to fruitlessness is also always very negative. You remember that in Matthew chapter 21 in verse 19, Matthew 21 verse 19, when he saw the tree that was covered with leaves without fruit, he said, get away with that from here. You are only covering the ground without fulfilling your purpose. In Luke 13, as you read from verse 6 to 9, Luke 13, 6 to 9, in the vineyard that was pressed water but not producing fruit, he said, okay, Let's, let's water it one more year and see what will happen, what will become of it. If it does not produce fruit, let's forget about it. Let's, let's cast, let's set it on fire. 
so that we know it is not, it is not ready to obey the divine mandates. That is the reason why I believe God with you tonight. That anything that says you will not be fruitful, physical, spiritual, financial, academical, ma ma material, marital, today the fire of the Holy Ghost will consume them. Yeah. Be fruitful. At least in five areas of life, there must be fruitfulness in your life. One, in the fruit of the womb, which he said, in the fruit of your body. Psalms 123, Psalm 127, verse 3, Psalm 127, verse 3, he said, Lo, children are the heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. It is my earnest prayer that every family in this church trusting and believing God for the fruit of the womb nine months away from here we will celebrate your children. I say we will celebrate your children. Whatever thing in your body that says you will not be fruitful is against God. And so today they are uprooted. Today they are removed in the name of Jesus. May your life yield according to divine demand in the mighty name of Jesus. If you believe it, let your amen be better. The number two area where you must be fruitful is in the fruit of your thought or the fruit of your mind. Creative imagination God wants you to develop a creative imagination. Jeremiah chapter 6 verse 9 talks about the fruit of the, of the thoughts. Ability to think, to think well and to think productively, to think creatively, to think progressively, to think increasingly, to think, you know, and get everything good into your life. Today I pray. That the hands of the Lord will touch your mind. Amen. The thought that will lead to greatness. May the Lord impart on your mind. Amen. May the Lord steer up your mind. Amen. That your thought will always be productive. Amen. The thought that will take you to the place of greatness. May the Lord establish on your mind. That which will place you ahead of all your peers. May the Lord give you such thoughts. In the mighty name of Jesus. The thought that will enthrone you. The thought that will put you ahead and before. May the Lord establish on your mind. In the mighty name of Jesus. Joseph. By the reason of a fruitful thought. Fruitful mind maximize his opportunity before Pharaoh in Egypt. Just one counsel and by the reason of just one counsel that he gave to the king he was enthroned. May the thought that will take you to the throne begin to come out of your mind. Amen. Begin to emanate from your mind Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. If you believe it, let your amen be better. Amen. The third area of your of fruitfulness is the fruit of your mouth. The fruit of your mouth. If your thought is fruitful, your mind will also be fruitful. Which means the kind of things that you will say that will bring a blessing into your life, that will bring peace unto people, that will bring progress, will always be coming out of your mouth. Proverbs 18 verse 20. Proverbs 18 20. Talk about the fruit of the mouth. Now the fruitfulness, the satisfaction of every man 
is based on how fruitful the amount is. The number four areas of fruitfulness is the fruit of the hand. The God will give you a fruitful hand. A hand that will be skillful. A hand that will be able to put things together. That whatever things that come into your hand, your hand will multiply them. When money come into your hand, if you're, when your hand is fruitful, that money never diminish in your hand. You know, it has a way of reproducing, producing, you know, multiplying that money in your hand. I say to you this night, may the anointing of God rest upon your hand. Yeah. And every legitimate business that you engage your hand into, may it produce for you in abundance. May it be multiplied unto you in the name of Jesus. May this good works of, the, of your hand remain blessed and blessed and blessed and blessed in the mighty name of Jesus. May everyone see the blessing of God in your hand and appreciate the glory of the Almighty. In the mighty name of Jesus. Proverbs 31 verse 31 talks about the fruit of the hand. Fruit of the hand. Some hands are fruitful. When they pick a thread, they will turn it to a sweater. When they pick a rubbish, they will turn it to a world. They convert, they touch anything, that thing will be converted into blessing. And all that God has to do is just to touch your mind, touch your hand. And then from the dumb hill, there will be a, 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 a well site that will come for you. In the midst of every chaos, opportunity will come for you. I speak to somebody even while others are resetting, are you know, quitting, are getting off, God will place an idea into your hand that will multiply you exceedingly. The Lord that turned the seed in the hand of Isaac to a great harvest that a whole nation were envying. Prosper your hand mightily. Yeah. Now whatever seed that is in your hand now. Become exceedingly great. Yeah. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. That little business in your hand. Today I inject it. With the anointing for greatness. Yeah. With the anointing for greatness. Yeah. With the power for greatness. In the mighty name of Jesus. As Isaac was envied. May your life become an envy to many. In the mighty name of Jesus. If you believe it, let your amen be better. A man was retiring from work. In fact, the first month of his retire, retirement, they came to give him, give him what they will be giving him every month. And he collected it in and looked at it and said, is this what my life will depend on for the rest of my life? It was just 60. Say, so is this what my life will depend on for the rest of my life? No. Something must be done. With that paycheck in his hand, he said to himself, I need to do something with this that will turn things around. And all of a sudden, he remember, my mother used to fry a chicken in a very special way that uh, this, you know, the spices he normally use, I have understanding of it. I think I need to do something about it. And so he walked into some restaurant and said, do you mind I begin to supply you some fried chicken that is fried in a very special way? 
And I said, we won't mind. Go and bring it. He has not bought one chicken. He began to move from one place to the other to go and uh, So, he decided. Today, everywhere in the world, today, is, he has a shop. Each time you go to a place and you see something they call KFC. Kentucky Fried Chicken. That was the man. He has worked and he retired. But he said, I am not tired. I want to increase. At the retirement, that is when the beginning of wealth came into his life. I am saying to somebody once again today, the idea that we carry you around the wall, may the Lord deposit into your hand. May the Lord deposit into your hand. And may the Lord cause your hand to be exceedingly fruitful. In the mighty name of Jesus. You will never diminish. You will only increase. You will make progress. You will advance. You will become exceedingly great. If you believe it, let your amen be better. And then the fifth area of fruitfulness is in the fruit of the spirit. Character that is in line with the word of God. That people will see you like it was seen in the life of the early Christian and early disciple. And they say, these are Christian. Fruit of the spirit. There are people, the Bible says, they are ever learning, but never come to the knowledge of the truth. May that never be your portion. Yeah. But may you be one of those who transform from glory to glory. Yeah. And bring glory and honor to the name of the Lord. Yeah. May that be your portion. Yeah. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. God wants your life to manifest his fruit. And so, as you obey and comply with the instruction of being fruitful, you will see the manifestation in different way, in different style, in the name of the Lord. So shall it be in the name of Jesus. A fruitful life will be fruitful against all odds. A fruitful life will be fruitful against all odds. Genesis chapter 26, when you read from verse 21 to 22, Isaac, there was a famine in the land. There have not been rain, there was a drought in the land. Things were scarce. Now everybody were waiting. But this man began to dig and he was digging, they were taking the thing, but he never stopped. He was moving forward. There were obstacles. Rain was not falling. So he was digging to make his irrigation farm. And as he was digging, some people were taking it away from him. But he never stopped. But he was moving on. Moving on until he got to the place where he wearied out those that want to stop him. In spite of all all, may your life continue to be fruitful. Where others dug and they never found water. The servant of Isaac will go and they will come back. We have found water. They have not been raised, so the ground was very dry. So they dig, they will come with water. Others will try and try and fail and they will give up. But when Isaac enters into the place, he will produce results. I am saying to somebody here today, where others are quitting, where all the systems are not working, will it, may it work for you. May it work in your hand. May it work in your family. In the mighty name of Jesus. If you believe it, let your amen be better. Others may fail. Others may fumble. Others may say there is nothing. But as far as you are concerned, there will always be a glorious result. There will always be a mighty manifestation. There will always be a mighty performer. There will always be a testimony. 
in the mighty name of Jesus. Others will go into the business and say the business never pay. But when you go into it, you will make mighty great there. Others will try a business and will say, that business is a, is, is a devourer. When you try it, it will yield greatly unto you. People will sell you and say, the profit is too small. But when you try it on your own, the, ma the profit margin will be so great. Because God has commanded it. And you are a child of covenant. Ishmael is reproducing himself. But God has said in that Genesis 17, 21, my covenant, my covenant, my covenant is with Isaac. What does that mean? Ishmael may give birth to 1,000 children. Isaac will give birth to one and that one will rule over the 1,000. The one who is a covenant child will be the one who rule. He will be the king and those ones will be servants under him. I speak to your lie. Your seed will be a mighty great. Ah. None of your seed, none of your children will be servant, will be under the servitude of the Ishmaelites. May you rule over them. May you dominate them. May you control them. May you be in charge over them. In the mighty name of Jesus. No matter how much they are, may they be subjected under your control and authority. In the mighty name of Jesus. If you believe it, let your amen be better. Say with me, I shall be great. I shall be very great. I shall be exceedingly great. I will rule my world. I will rule my world. I will dominate my world. I will be in charge. I will be in control.